Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah, and I'm here with my dad, Pastor Craig Roders. What's up? So today, it's just me and my dad. So it's we just are, us. It's just us. I've been on for like over a month. Yeah, probably longer, but he's doing better. He had the Rona, and the Rona. his oxygen dropped down to 64. So he's in the hospital. <laughs> so I'm a little slow. You know what happened? <laughs> no, but he's doing well, so praise yeah. God. Yeah. And today we will be answering your guys' questions that you guys sent in about the end times, about the rapture, about pre-trip, pre-mill. So that's what we're doing today. But before we get started, Dad, do you want to pray for us? Yeah, let's pray. Father, just thank you so much for this day. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your word, Lord. You said the heaven, earth, heaven and earth shall pass away, but your word shall endure forever. So, Father, let us love your word. You put your word above your name. Let us believe it. Let us do our best to live it through the power of your spirit and just to be be effectual doers of your word, not just hearers only. And I pray that we'll see today, as, as we're going to see today, that that the belief in a pre-trib, pre-mill, which I believe is biblical, mm -hmm. it prepares us, as it says in 1 John 3, 3, that all who have this hope, what hope? The hope of your return will keep themselves pure just as you are pure. And that's our desire yes. is to be ready for you, to be ready for your return and our, and also to live pure, to, to, uh, witness too. If we know you're coming back soon, there's nothing that needs to happen before the rapture can take place that we want to tell our friends and family members, because we don't want anyone to go through the tribulation because they'll, the people will make it through, but it will be literally hell on earth. And so father help us to tell people about Jesus before the rapture and before the tribulation starts in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right. So this is going to be fun because we actually are in the book of Daniel right now as a church for our midweek service. So if you guys want to join us, you guys can check out those services online for our Wednesday night. And if you guys want to come, you can come. That's from 7 to 8 30 PM on Wednesdays. But my dad also, you were in revelation for like Basically two years, right? <laughs> yeah, over about a year like, and a half. Yeah. I've taught it twice. I taught at the beginning of this church about 20 years ago and taught it for a year and a half. Oh. And then I taught it for a year and a half again. We go verse by verse. So mm -hmm. we dealt with pretty much everything because a lot of people skip in, in Revelation and so yeah. you don't understand things. So I wanted to do every single verse. So it took a while. Yeah, it did. But it was good because during actually when we were um, not feeling well and sick, we were stuck at home in quarantine. So I feel like the Lord was telling me to just read Revelation and Revelation is just revelation, not with what any S's. Yeah. Um, a lot of people say revelations, but there's yeah. only one revelation. Yeah. So just letting you guys know, we're going to give you some tips and things, but um, also the cool thing about uh, revelation is that it's like my daughter says, it's not supposed to scare us, but it's supposed to prepare us. Mm. And I think that um, another cool thing is it talks about there's like a blessing. It says in Revelation mm -hmm. 1, it talks about there's a blessing for those who read this book. And we'll, yeah. we'll get into that, those verses later. I'm kind of skipping ahead. But um, first, I'm going to define some terms. That's what we want to do a lot, too, is we don't want to just like give you guys big words and then not explain it. Because I know a lot of people do that. And then you're like, I have no clue what that means. So um, always you, uh, make sure to comment gonna, below. Or we can also say like Ryan Reese. We can say, I understand it. But can you but unpack can you that unpack? for us? So, yeah, if you <laughs> got to use that, we don't know a word. We just say, can you yeah. to the speaker, can you unpack that? But yeah. let us know if you don't understand. You can guys comment down below. Um, message us. You can also email us at calvaryov at calvaryov.org and send us your questions because we want to do these more often. We mm -hmm. want to be able to answer your questions too. Like once a Q and month. A, yeah, once a month and do like Bible prophecy because the sad thing is a lot of churches nowadays are just completely taking out prophecy, yeah. which is sad because 27 to 30 percent of the Bible is prophecy. Yeah, I think it said only 7 percent of the churches mm -hmm. in America teach prophecy. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, and a lot of people in seminary too, they're going to seminary and they're not learning about the end times. They're not learning about eschatology. So eschatology is another, just a big word for the end times, the study of end times or prophecy. Can I say but, this too, Mariah? I got to interrupt you, sorry. But what's wild too is how when I, 40 years ago when I was in Bible college, 
you didn't have a whole lot of hybrids, yeah. you know, it was pretty much pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, and maybe all millennialism. Now you have all these hybrids. So the reason why they don't teach it in seminary, they it's say, because there's so much controversy of what people believe, they just don't teach it. And that's really sad. That just shows, I love what Calvary said, nothing true is new and nothing new is true. So it's sad that we're getting all these hybrids. And it seems like, sadly, even people we really love, they kind of want to go through the tribulation, yeah. which uh, hopefully we're going to see today that God says, pray that you might escape that. Amen. So, hey, but you know what? If you really want to go through tribulation, maybe God will answer your prayer. But I personally, <laughs> I just went through, I had coronavirus. I almost felt like I was going to die. And uh, I didn't like it. So if I can escape pain without mm -hmm. sinning, I will definitely do it. So, yeah, especially yeah. the wrath of God. Um, so as Calvary, and not just as Calvary, but most Calvaries, right? Pastor yeah. Jack Hibbs, mm -hmm. Pastor Chuck Smith, they're all pre-trib, pre-mill. So basically what that means is, We'll kind of give the divine outline. Like my dad, do you want to give the yeah with Revelation? The divine outline is found in Revelation one nineteen, and that is it says Revelation one nineteen. It says the things you have seen, and that's chapter one, the glorified Christ, which is really cool because I love this. People, you know, some people say you can never. Uh, I don't say slain the spirit, but go out. But it's pretty neat how John he used to snuggle with Jesus on earth. He sees <laughs> Jesus glorified. He falls like a dead man. So that's yep. the glorified Christ the resurrected Christ, and then chapters two and three, uh, the things that are, and that's the things, that's the church, that's the church age, is the different periods of church age in history. And then you have the things that will happen after this, metatauta, things that happen after this, and that's chapters four and five, I'm sorry, after this, you have the rapture, for chapters four and five, then you have six through 19, which is tribulation period, then you have chapter 20, which is the millennial kingdom, and the new heaven and new earth. And if you really want to simplify it, the things that are, or think says, the things you've seen, that's the glorified Christ, chapter one. The things that are, that's chapters two and three. And really the things that will happen after this is really chapters four through 22. And to make it simplified, but we kind of broke it a little more. But that's basically the divine outline. That's how the Bible, but a lot of people mix all things around, mm -hmm. which why would God write a letter where you have to put yeah. chapter this chapter before this chapter but if you just follow the divine outline found in revelation 119 then it makes it pretty simple mm -hmm. and so we believe as like we're seeing the divine outline that um the the church age right that was in chapters is it is that two, two and three yep. talking about the church age and our prayer is to be like the church of philadelphia right mm -hmm. it says um let me find it uh, you're finding that a lot of scholars say that the two churches, you know, some people disagree with this, but a lot of people disagree on revelation, but, but we're right. So, okay. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. But, um, the two churches of the last days is a church of Ephesus and the church of Laodicea. And we want to, I'm sorry, church of Philadelphia. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Church of Philadelphia. And that's the last two churches, right? Yep. And then Laodicea. And you look at Laodicea as what it says, you're rich, you, you know, we have no need of nothing, they say. And Jesus says, you're poor, wretched, naked. Jesus is standing at the door knocking, trying to get in. But then the church of Philadelphia, which is a church we hope to be, mm -hmm. it says you have little strength. He says, blessed are God who opens the doors that no man can shut and shuts the door that no man can open. And you, you've resisted evil. You, you, you resisted. So we want to be that. But the true churches a lot of times are going to be possibly the smaller churches because why they preach the word. Um, I think I heard a stat that says almost half of so-called Christians in America believe that Jesus is a way. And so that shows how biblically illiterate we've become because Jesus said in John 14, six, I am the way, the truth and life. No one comes to father except through me. And so we see that if we're wrong on Jesus, then we're definitely going to be wrong on our end times mm -hmm. or weak on it and crazy. And we, and we see, yeah, that. but, um, but the verses, Revelation 3, um, we'll start in verse 8. It says, I know your works. Behold, I have set before you an open door, which no one is able to shut. I know that you have but little power, and yet you have kept my word and I, and have not denied my name. So that's our prayer is like as a church, you know, we're small, but... The, whole, the main thing that we want is that says, yeah, you have kept my word and have not denied my name. And so I think that's the key in all of that is to realize, too, that we are the bride of Christ. Like he's coming back for his church. And so when people say, oh, I don't have to go to church. It's not that important. Like he's not coming back for just like a Christian. He's coming back for his church. Mm -hmm. And so I think that 
not saying that if you're not going to church, okay, you're not saved, but it does say in Hebrews. But you to, are weird. Yeah, but you do get weird. It <laughs> yeah. is true. You I get, just said that. I just said that yeah. Wednesday. I said, you know, because it's a command. I mean, Hebrews, Hebrews ten twenty five is not a suggestion. And we Amen. have tons of people that have been in church and that are coming back to church. Yeah, because he says, don't Especially forsake the fellowship the of believers as, uh, with fellow other believers as such as a custom of some, especially as the day of the Lord approaches. So it's saying in the last days, people will be hurt. People's hearts are going to wax cold. They're going to be tempted. I can't go to church. And let me know, church can hurt you because there's sinful people there. But know this, everywhere can hurt you. So guess what? But we need people, brothers and sisters in Christ, we need to find a good church, right? Not a perfect church, right? I love when one person said, if you try to find a perfect church, if you find a perfect church, don't go there because you'll mess it up. So there is no such thing as a perfect church because it's all sinners trying to become like Christ, more like Christ. We're forgiven, but then we're trying to walk out uh, sanctification. So it takes time. But guess what? We need our brothers and sisters to encourage us. And we also need our brothers and sisters to be that iron sharpens iron, to refine us, the living stones that bang into each other and kind of rough off each other's rough edges. But that's a choice because, you know, Satan's going to say, oh, you know, pastors are hypocrites. All they want is your money. I just heard one person say, oh, you know, uh, all pastors, you know, molest people. Okay, well, there are there some that want your money? Yes. Are there some that molest kids? Sadly, yes. But that's not all. And so what you need to do is say, God, help me to find a church that is really teaching your Bible, the Bible and really trying to do their best to live for you. And hopefully there are, I believe there's always a remnant, the Bible says. So there always is going to be people that want the truth. You just need to cry out and pray and God will move heaven and earth, I believe. And if not, if you're somewhere where there is no church, then you can do online. Praise God, there's online services. But I would not say if you have a place, if you're in a big city, you should pray to find a church that's biblical and doing mm -hmm. their best to really live for God. Amen. And then, um, like I was saying before, uh, the reason why we also love studying Revelation and Daniel and all these things mm -hmm. is, I'll just read the verse. I quoted it before, but Revelation 1, 3 says, Blessed is the one who reads the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear and who keep what is written in it for the time is near. So we need to remind each other that the time is near. And we see that with the signs coming, like it talks about the birthing pains and the things that we see. And that's where we're going to explain more and talk about why, even though we believe we'll be going through hard times and tribulation, that doesn't mean we're going to be going through the wrath of God. Mm. And we'll explain that with things like with Noah and with Lot and just different things with like in Daniel and all that stuff. So, um, oh, can I, can I say one thing about that? Yeah, yeah. What's so crazy about that too, is how we hear even someone that we know we really respect. That's very, uh, much of an apologist says, Oh, I just don't like the book of revelation. It's, confusing. it's just too confusing. Or other. Well, okay. But we need to do our best because look at this. I don't know too many books that start off saying blessed is the one who reads it. So that's me teaching it that I'm blessed as I teach it. And those blessed are those who hear it. So this book promises a blessing to those who read or teach it and those who hear it. So we should be as Christians, right? I don't know about you. I want to be blessed every day. I want to be more and more blessed by God. And he says, the way you do that, read this book. So to put it off is kind of, I think foolish mm -hmm. because we should want the blessing of God. And what does it say too? another place? says a revelation of Jesus Christ. So yep. shouldn't we want to know about Jesus? Or like, nah, Jesus is too complicated. No, Jesus, what did the Bible say? The Holy spirit will lead us into all truth. We should Amen. pray. Holy spirit lead us. Right. And to be informed. Like the cool thing is God gives us these prophecies to inform us to not just do it so that like, Oh, we're warned, but to give him glory to say mm -hmm. like, Hey, I said this before and look, it happened. So that just shows how amazing God is and how yeah. sovereign he is. And, and so the it, other it good really thing, the other good glory. thing, my sorry, interrupt you. I haven't done this in a while. But the <laughs> other good thing is what revelation. A lot of people say revelation is so scary. It's so scary. I can't read revelation. Revelation is not to scare us, but to prepare us. What, what do people say even in the world? Knowledge is power. So we want to know what's happening. So when things get crazy, we're not going. And I can I just say, I'm going to get, say a little freebie. This will be weird, controversial, might get kicked off. But I want to tell you this, guys. Some people say, oh, the, 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 ant, the vaccine is the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. No, it's not. Because when you, if those are in the tribulation, take the mark, it's going to be allegiance mm -hmm. to the beast. So it's not going to be a whoops, I took it, I didn't know. But hear this. I'm going to tell you this. The hardcore push for this vaccine 
Isn't it amazing? A lot of them are liberals, and the same liberals that said, my body, my choice for abortion, are now pushing this vaccine, and I think it's a precursor mm-hmm. to the mark. Because it's like what? You, with the mar- without the mark of the beast, you won't be able to buy or sell. You'll be able to do nothing. And what has Fauci said? If you don't have the, the card, the vaccine, they he wants travel. it so you can't fly, you can't go to sports or events, you can't go to movie theaters, you can't buy big stores, you can to only go to mom and pops that are nut bars that don't have to take the vaccine. And I'm not against, hear me, I'm not against the vaccine. Mm-hmm. If you want to take the vaccine, God bless you. But I think we should also have the choice to not take the vaccine. Amen. The part that I'm frustrated with is the forcing of the vaccine, yep. right? And that's the part where you see how government is becoming ready yep. And people are getting ready for a government to say, hey, take this mark or you will not be able to buy or sell. And that's the part I fight. And that's the thing. Remember, I think it was John Mayhew who said when they broke off from England, when we broke off back in the 1700s, he says, we rebellion against tyrants is obedience to God. And we have one God. and His name is Jesus. Or we have mm-hmm. one king. And his name is Jesus. And that's the way we got to say enough, enough of this forcing. We are a country of liberty, of freedom. And we should have the freedom to take the vaccine or not take the vaccine. But the fact that government is becoming kind of tyrannical to say you got to take it or else, that's what's scary because that's kind of the way it's going to mm-hmm. be in the tribulation. Well, it's not going to be. It's going to be that way. Yeah. And they're going to be forced to take this mark or you will have a very hellish life yeah. on earth. And I'll just give you guys the outline again because it can be kind of confusing. But um, the thing is the the first coming of Jesus, right, when he came on earth, right, as a baby. And then there's the day of Christ, which, right, that's the rapture. Mm -hmm. That's where we're going to talk about that, what that means, because people are like, the word rapture is in the Bible. We're going to talk about that. Mm -hmm. We'll get to that next. Um, And then there's the second coming um, is the day of the the Lord, which is like the beginning. It's like the tribulation, tribulation. um, the beginning of the tribulation, and then to the end of the millennium. To the end of millennium. But to make it also, so there's a seven year. So we believe there's going to be the rapture where the church is taking up. And then there's a seven year tribulation. And then that's when at the end of that, that's right. That's the second coming. Because people get confused yeah, with the rapture with him. and the yeah. second coming. And that's when yeah. we come back with him. And then we rule and reign with him for a thousand years, mm-hmm. which is the thousand year reign. Yeah. It talks about some people are like, oh, I don't believe it's a literal thousand years and those are people who I think are all millennial but um we believe it's what the bible says yeah. that's an actual thousand years but um well, like the reason say, for people it people say when the literal sense makes sense mm-hmm. seek no other sense yeah. so that's the thing and we're it's not like, saying we're you know. right because I know I get what some people say is like oh but sometimes they say like a thousand years is like a day or whatever. It doesn't matter. All we know is that it does talk about how God does need to rule though, because I, Jack Hibbs was talking about it is because we need to see a righteous government, yeah. which is God. Well, so well, God's going to rule instead of like these politicians. Nowadays. Well, that's what we were praying when we pray the Lord's prayer. Thy we say kingdom your come. kingdom come, your will be done on earth. Now we're also, I pray it for me daily, right? Lord, I want your will to be done in my life, but is it done perfectly in my life? Mm-hmm. No, no one's life is perfectly done his will. Now, hopefully the majority of our life is God's will, but we're longing for that day, right? Cause he first came the first time, first coming, he came as a suffering servant to die in our place. Mm-hmm. But when he comes back again, the Bible says he will rule the earth with a rod of iron. And we long for that when he will be the conquering King, he will be the King of Kings, and Lord of Lords, and we will rule and reign with him. So we're raptured. We believe we spend seven year honeymoon with Jesus. Then at the end of the, of not the millennial kingdom, but the end of the tribulation, mm-hmm. That's we come back coming. and we rule and reign with him for a thousand years. And why we will rule and reign with him because we will be perfected. And so the people, the tribulational saints, those who made it through the tribulation, then those who got saved, they will have our nature. They'll have a, a, the spirit and a sinful nature. So we will rule and reign in righteousness with Christ. Christ mm-hmm. will rule from Jerusalem on the throne of David. And then we will, you know, I've got Maui, so I'm going to be ruling and reigning in no. Maui. Just kidding. <laughs> but uh, I always joke with that. People joke there's no C, but anyway. No. I, I, anyway. So, but we're going to be ruling and reigning because, and, and then justice will be instant. There won't be like, tw- you know, three-year court, dates to see if a murderer should get tried everything will be instant and it'll be done 
righteously. So Yep. And then Satan will be, oh. and all of this right here that we're talking about the thousand years is in chapter 20 of Revelation. So you guys can read that. And the whole thing with all this too, is we really want you guys to study out on your own too, but we want to give you tools and stuff because we're not saying, oh, there's only one right way and it's our way. But like, I like this one guy, he was saying, he's like, you have the right to be wrong. But he's like, but the main thing with it is it's not anything to argue about. That's all yeah. I'm saying. It's not anything that we can. Unless you deny that he's coming back. Exactly. Unless you deny he's not coming back because you need to be prepared. Cause I love how Jack Hibbs says it either rupture. So any of us can die. Right. I think all of us understand that like, oh, we could die, but rapture, we can yeah. be taken up. And the crazy thing is we're going to get into this later, but for those who have heard the gospel and rejected it, you can't just be like, oh, the rapture happens and I'll be able to like accept Christ there. No, it says in second, is it that second Thessalonians 2? Yeah, second Thessalonians That two. There'll, you'll be given into a delusion. So don't be think today is the day of salvation. Amen. That's why the Bible says that because Amen. we don't know. It says we don't know the day or the hour because some people also another thing, people are trying to predict like what day it is it and stuff. And Jack Hibbs, he was also saying like, why do people keep doing it? It's not going to happen on that day yeah. now because you said yeah, that. Exactly. But we can uh, see uh, the signs of like when uh, it's about to, but not the day or the hour. No one can predict that. I also want to say this is that, you know, people um, um, that, that um, we've gotten so complicated, like I said, it's it's not, I mean, I think is it, it used to be pretty simple, you know, a lot of people were pre-trib, pre-mill, and now it's gotten crazy, but um, but I think is we need to really, I, oh, this one I want to say, sorry, I was kind of like thought, lost a corona brain there for a second, <laughs> or corona brain, but I was like, this is that people need to study, we need to not be afraid of this, but listen, don't find a lot of your information on the internet on YouTube because mm -hmm. that's where there's a lot of craziness. I mean, I'm on YouTube, so you know there's a lot of craziness. But okay. go to church. No, but go to church, church and go to a Bible believing church and go to mainstream because we're getting all these hybrids yeah. that are crazy. I mean, we're getting these crazy guys that aren't pastors just saying this stuff, and we need to really be discriminatory. I love what Bob Dylan said when he did his Christian stent. He said, I don't want to have to learn something I got to unlearn. So if I don't know the person's name and I don't know about him and I don't have someone who tells who I trust tell me oh this is a good teacher I don't take it in because I don't you know and a lot of people aren't biblically biblically literate to where they can kind of go ooh, that's not right and people just gulp down and that's why though I believe you know the internet's good in some ways but it's really bad in some ways have gotten all these strange strange mm -hmm. end times belief you know and now what's really weird wild to me is being a Christian for 40 years now everyone's saying we're going through the tribulation Mm -hmm. Why would you want to go through the tribulation? Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying you just get to pick you don't want to, but I believe the Bible teaches that, and we can show you many scriptures. Yeah, well, but yet it seems like we're just sort of going, oh, you know, because the world's going crazy, but... It's not the you wrath know, of but God. God yeah, yeah, the difference is, I'm just going to say this, maybe I'll skip ahead. People say, but Craig, why do you think you as a Christian escape pain and suffering? I don't believe that. But I say the problem of us going through the tribulation even the front end, the three and a half years, is because this is God, as it says in the end of Revelation uh, 6, 17, I believe. It says God is going to pour out his wrath on a Christ-rejecting mm -hmm. world. And God said he's not appointed us to wrath. He First says Thessalonians in 5, 9. 5, 9. So God took our wrath that we deserve, all of us, on the cross. So why would God pour out his wrath on me as a Christian? You see what I mean? And it's not because I'm worthy, but because of Jesus took my wrath, took our wrath. Those of us in Christ, we're not going to experience the wrath of God. So what Christians like in China, Christians in Iran, Afghanistan, they're experiencing the wrath of Satan. But this in the tribulation period is going to be the wrath of Satan and the wrath of the Lamb of God. Mm -hmm. So that's why we believe, one of the main reasons we believe biblically why we're not going to go through the tribulation. Yep. Amen. And then I want to read some other verses and then we'll get into more of your questions and things like that. And we're not going to be able to get through all of your questions you guys sent like in because talk. there's so much. But, but um, keep sending them in. We'll yeah, do our yeah. best to answer them because we're going to do this like once a month, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. But First Thessalonians 4.13 says, But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. So we need, that's why, again, that's just another verse for, this is why we're informing you. But also I encourage you guys to read the book of Daniel, to read Revelation, to read first and second Thessalonians, to read Joel, like all these books are 
preparing us and like telling us what's going to come. So I just think it's, it's really beautiful. But, um, so the first question is rapture isn't in the Bible. So why do you guys keep saying it? So, okay, I'm going to bring, so I did Latin for like six years in school. Um, I still don't really know it. I probably know Latin more than Spanish actually, but, um, so there's rapi more, which is the Latin for rapture. So that is where we find that is in first Thessalonians four seventeen. It says after that we who are alive and remain will be caught up. So that's the word for rapi or rapi harpazo. Mora. Um, so that well, rapi, caught up. Rapi mora, rapi oh yeah. That rapi is, is Latin. Is is Latin. Yeah. And then and harpazo, then harpazo is, Greek. is Greek. And what that means is caught up. It means to be snatched away. Mm-hmm. It means like if your little kid was running out into traffic, you would grab them by the shirt and yank them back. So it's God is going to yank us out of this world because why? It's going to get to the place where we can't be salt and light. The mm-hmm. world's going to go so crazy. And I heard a really interesting, can I say this is going to be a little off topic, but to show how crazy the world's going to be when God raptures us is in the first three and a half years, there'll be the two witnesses. Now people argue it'll be, uh, it's going to be uh, um, uh, um, Elijah, uh, Elijah Moses, and Moses or Enoch. Or Enoch. Some people think. But there'll be two witnesses. But they're going to kill the two witnesses. And this is a time of peace, right? The Antichrist yep. false peace. But they're going to kill the two witnesses. They're going to leave them dead there for, what, three days? I mean, Street, they're going to yeah. leave them dead. So that's really peaceful, loving people. <laughs> and what are they going to do? It says they're going to give gifts to each other. Hmm. So that's going to be peaceful, loving time. So their their definition of peace, they got to be so nice. They mm-hmm. leave dead people in the street, just, and they're like, ha, ha, ha. And they're just going to be, that's so crazy it's going to be. Yep. I mean, that's nuts. So anyway. mm-hmm. And so, again, saying, so we get the word rapture from that when it talks about being caught up. And so it's from the word, the Latin, rapi more, or I've also heard raptura or just rapi, different things. Ra- yeah, it depends who it is. I, I love yeah, it. So rapi many- more. So mm-hmm. what's up? Rapi Amor. What's up? Yeah. And then the other, the Greek is harpazo. So yeah. being caught up. And then so also. That, so know this. We also don't have the word Trinity in the Bible. Mm-hmm. Okay. But we believe in the Trinity. Or the word Bible so, in the Bible. So, yeah. So, but, but that's where we get. So the ra- rapture isn't just a made up word. Like, like someone just said, some gringo pastor said, Hey, let's call it the rapture. It is Rapi Amor from the Latin where we get the word rapture. So caught up when you say uh, that we are alive, we remain, we'll be caught up together in the clouds. We're going to meet Jesus in the clouds. That's the, that's the rapture to meet the Lord in the air. That's where we get the word rapture. And there's a lot of words we have that are not in the Bible, but come from the Latin. Or yeah. Greek. So then other people, I know a lot of people put this down, but um, the church was mentioned in chapters two and three in revelation two and three but then after that so after 17 times in i think so yeah but after that um in revelation four it through until um is it 19 when we come back with christ um four through i think it's four through 19 Um, I don't have my notes. I have on my computer, but I forgot my notebook. But um, after that, so Revelation 4, it's 4.1. It says, after this. we're not called the church, then we just come back. What? We're not called the church because this is the church. Yeah, yeah. So the church age isn't mentioned again after that. Yeah, that's the last time is chapter 4. Yeah, so then when you start seeing the tribulation and all that stuff and the wrath of the Lamb, which is the wrath of God, um, were not mentioned the church. So, and why they see that that happened was in Revelation 4, 1. It says, after this, I look, this is John speaking, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. And the voice I had heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, come up here and I will show you must what must take place after this. So a lot of people are saying, oh, that's just John being taken up to be seen, to be able to see this stuff. Mm-hmm. But when it talks about, being taken up again that is the caught up and saying like snatched out taken away so i think that i know a lot of people have their weird things with it but the thing that i really think is that makes the most sense of it is the church ages mentioned in two and three and after it says the caught up you don't see it anymore Mm -hmm. and then you also see in stories like with noah or lot um I encourage you guys to watch, uh, we've had him on in the past, uh, pastor James Cadiz. He does a lot of Bible prophecy, um, with Don Stewart, right? Don Stewart. Mm -hmm. And it's really cool because he explained this to us. Like it talks about, um, I think it also says like in the days of Noah, um, 
but people will be like eating and drinking and all that stuff. Um, I think that he was explaining too. He's like, when you're in the tribulation, you're not going to be having weddings and marriages and Mm -hmm. eating and drinking. He's like, there's going to be hailstones. There's going to be sea life dead. There's going to be just all this, these things where you're not going to be eating and drinking and having weddings and things like that. You're going to be having funerals constantly. So, um, I think it was also cool because he was saying that when you see that with Lot, when you see that with Noah, before God is pouring out his wrath, he takes his people out, right? And I get, okay, maybe some people are saying, yeah, but I think we'll go through part of it, right? Some people are mid-trip, but we won't, um, what did they say? Oh, but we'll be like in a little bubble or something or above. Mm. But if you want to believe that, you can. It's nothing to argue about. If you yeah. feel like God, that's okay. But it just makes it very clear when you keep seeing like the caught up or taken out when it talks about in the Bible. And the Bible that, says pray. You know, the other thing. They oh, say, and then also it talks about us then being in the the marriage feast, right? Yeah. During that time. Yeah. I forgot where but that is. It also is. tells us to pray that we might be kind of worthy. We're going to see in a second. But I it's like when Jesus tells you to pray that you may be kind of worthy to escape. Mm-hmm. I don't know about you, but I like to escape pain if I can. Right. I don't like unnecessary pain. You know, I guess when weightlifting, no pain, no gain, maybe that pain, but not pain of getting shot or tortured. And and, and I want to read. Can I read the thing? I want to read what we, we quoted. But I want, but listen to this. This is what's going to happen in chapter six this is chapter Revelation, chapter six, verse 15. And the kings of the earth and the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men. So everyone, every slave, every free man hid themselves as during the tribulation, hid themselves in caves and in the rocks. So they're not going to be there. It is no marriage hid themselves in the rocks, and the mountains. Verse 16, and said to the mountains, rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne, that's God, and from the wrath of the Lamb, verse 17, for the great day of his wrath, there it is again, wrath of God, this isn't Satan, the great day of his wrath shall, has come, and who is able to stand? So this is why, because of First Thessalonians 5, 9, it says God has not appointed us to wrath, but to him salvation through Jesus Christ. That's why we believe that we're not going to go through it. And we also say like Lot, when it says, mm-hmm. oh, it's at Genesis, I forget, what Genesis 13, when it was oh, Lot. Yeah. But where he says, remember, the angel of the Lord, a lot of people believe it's Christ, came to Abraham and said, hey, you, you, I'm going to destroy uh, Sodom. And then Lot, or Abraham goes, oh, my goodness, my, my nephew Lot's there. What am I going to do? So then he kind of sheepishly, appeals to God. So would you destroy Sodom if there was 50 righteous men? Well, then he goes from 50 righteous men all the way down to 10. And God says, no, I would not destroy Sodom, even though it's a terrible place, kind of like America, but even a little worse, right? Remember men came to, 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 um, Lot's house and said, let us sleep with these angels. Let us sleep with these men. And we want to have sex with them. And, uh, and here's Lot where I don't even really think he's that godly. Cause he said, here, take my virgin daughters. But yet what happened? God protected him. God, the angels took them, took them out of Sodom. Then it was destroyed with fire and brimstone. And so you see that where even a guy who I could technically say isn't the most godly person I've ever seen, and yet he's in the Hall of Faith, though, in Hebrews 11, but you see God spared him, Mm -hmm. amen? And so we need to see that God, if God spared people in the Old Testament before Jesus had paid the price for all our sins, how much more will God spare Mm -hmm. us, especially from his wrath? Yeah, and it's in Genesis. um, Oh, man, I forgot the chapter. I just had it. I just have verse 27 somewhere. um, I know. What do you think about, it says, what do you think, um, why do you think we haven't already gone through it? So like we kind of answered it, but people are asking like, why do you think when, and I think the answers that we have for it are because you have the bulls, right? Yeah. And the, third of the wrath. Earth, the third of the earth dying. I don't remember. Revelation um, 16 is the sea life dies. Yeah. 20. I haven't seen a third of the earth die, right? No. So if you, know, if you believe Sad. it happened in AD 70, did you see a third of the earth die? Mm-hmm. But then it's so funny. Then also remember a thousand years, because some people believe the thousand years started AD 70, right? And they don't take mm-hmm. it literal because that had been longer than, right? That would be longer that we'd be past two, a thousand years. Um but but what happens is they say that um, 
we uh, um, that that Satan is bound, right? The Bible says Satan will be bound in the middle of the kingdom. And I'm like, mm-hmm. if Satan is bound, then I want my money back, right? Yeah. But yet they'll say, oh, there's some kind of weird. He's sort of bound. I don't understand that. But um, I was talking to someone. They said that. But Satan will be bound, you know. And can I say a little free thing? I'm going to add a little mm-hmm. free thing. What I love too. So here's the thousand year reign, the millennial kingdom. God's going to rule and reign. We're going to reign with him. But there's going to be people like us who are saved, tribulational saints, those who got saved in the tribulation, and we're going to be on the earth with them. Well, they are going to, what I understand it, is everyone who starts the thousand-year reign is saved, okay? But then they'll have kids, right? Because if you die at 100 years of age, it says in Isaiah, it'll be like you're, you're, you, if you die at 100, it'll be like you died as a child because it's going to be so blessed, right? You'll be able to lay, the lion will lay down the lamb, everything's going to be blessed. But these people are going to have kids, and so those kids are going to have to make a choice for Christ because God isn't forced. Even if it's the middle of the kingdom, they still have a free will. Well, here's what's crazy. At the end of the thousand years, Satan will be released, and some people will go with Satan mm-hmm. again and, perfect and with time. perfection. And that's what I love for liberals because my aunt's very liberal, and she says, well, if we had equal schooling, equal housing, if basically socialism, everyone's equal, everyone has the same amount of money, everyone has the same opportunities, then there will be no evil. There will be nothing. We would have no crime, nothing. Wasn't it wild where God, Jesus is reigning and ruling for a thousand years and then people still have free will. They reject Jesus and accept Satan and go with him and throw him in the bottomless pit. That Mm -hmm. should show you that man is evil. Doesn't need help with the devil because the devil's bound and yet they still rebel and hear this. What does Jeremiah 17, 9 say? Our hearts are desperately wicked and deceitful above all else who can know them. So what's the answer? Know that you're wicked and evil by yourself yeah. no. and turn to God. If you believe, I love this. I, I, so I'm one, man God has said, one man of God said this. If you think you're a good person, then you're probably not a Christian. Yeah. Because the only re- reason you're going to be a Christian is because you realize you're not a good person apart from Christ. The only thing good in us is Christ and his Holy Spirit. And we're trying to, what does the Bible say? Galatians 5.16, walk by the Spirit. So you will not fulfill the lusts or desires of flesh. The only way you and I can be truly righteous, truly good, is through Christ and his holy blood. Amen. Amen. And then um, another thing that I just found the verse, I was trying to find it earlier, but when it talks about um, the trumpets, a lot of times whenever someone was saying, whenever it talks about the trumpets, you know, like it talks about in Revelation 4, 1, because people say, oh, that I don't think that verse counts as like being taken up. You see that also in First Corinthians um, chapter 15, starting in verse 50. It says, I tell you this, brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable, perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. You shall not sleep, but you shall be all be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed for this imperishable imperishable body must be put on the imperishable and this mortal body must put on immortality. So a lot of times I think people get confused also with like the resurrections and things like mm-hmm. that. And the the pictures and someone else asked the question of like, what if you like give your like a, uh, like a, a kidney like donor or you're something <laughs> like that. Like what about that? And, how well, no, someone, someone else said to me when I was a baby Christian. So it says if you get a heart transplant, you need to re-accept Jesus because yeah. you gave your, you got a new heart. So. Yeah, anyway. but what you see is that when Christ comes, like the second coming, right, we will be, it says the dead will raise again. So basically our bodies, like our, our earthly bodies mm-hmm. and things will be put with our spiritual body. So I love how Jack Hibbs was saying it too. He was saying, so we're going to be spiritual beings, but also like physical, physical beings. So we're going to be able to enjoy the food, you know, the, yeah. the suppers, the it's banquets, like the things like that. Like yeah. <laughs> um, but people also yeah. ask like, cause some people get confused too. When you die, then where do you go? It says yeah. to be absent with the, the bodies to be present with God. So we're going to be with God. It's not like we're going to be waiting. I know my dad jokes and stuff when we say like, Oh, people up there are going to be like, um, hearing what we say. And, but we're all going to be like, right time is now with God. Yeah. Like, well, here, it's here's not the, here, like we're waiting for grandma and gra- or there, for our yeah, children. There's two things. I think it's Jehovah witnesses that believe in this thing called soul sleep. Mm, they believe like when you die, you take nap. a dirt nap for, so Paul's been taking a dirt nap for about 2000 years. Mm. So, but what did Paul say to be absent from the bodies, be present with Christ? Amen. He says, I long to be with Christ, but I stay here for you. 
So why would Paul say, no, I want to go and die because I want to take a dirt nap and just be in a, in a mm -hmm. grave somewhere or whatever, buried in the dirt. So what happens is there's two theories. But uh, the one theory is that if you die, then you basically, because your body, like say it's buried in a grave or it's cremated, then you go up in your spirit and then you're waiting for your body to be resurrected like you just read in 1 Corinthians 15. But I believe... It says that, Jesus, and Einstein even said this, that God is now, that time is, God has not time. He's transcended time. So God is now. There is no time in heaven. There's no past, present. So God is with Adam and Eve right now. Yep. God is with us in heaven right now. It says we're seated in heavenly places. So God is now. So he's seeing the whole thing at once. He's with Adam and Eve. That's why he said, I'm the God of the living, not the dead. I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They're with me. So guess what? So as soon as we die, there's no more time. So guess what? Your body's right there in heaven. And so that's kind of what I believe is that there is no separation because as soon as you die, it's all over anyway because there is no time in heaven. And that's a little mm -hmm. trippy. That'll make you feel like, whoa. You know, like you, if mm -hmm. any old hippies out there did drugs, it's kind of trippy to think God is now. There yeah. is no beginning, right? If you're at the speed of light, Einstein said that time stands still. Yeah. And so that's God is light. All, yeah. So there is no time. God is with the beginning of creation. He's with the end of everything. He's right now. So when we die, I believe that there is no time then, and then our body will be with our spirit. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. So the other one, we kind of already answered, why are you guys escapists? But that's <laughs> Luke 21, 35 through 36. It says, for it will come on all those who live on the face of the whole earth. Be always on the watch. So that's why we always need to be alert and prepared and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen. And what is it saying? All that's going to happen with the tribulation, right? There's going to be all the bowls of wrath and stuff. And people, someone else asked like, well, how do you know it's the wrath of the lamb, the wrath of God? Because it says it, it says <laughs> that in the Bible. Yeah, I just read it. Um, I just read it. And is that revelation six, six, uh, 15 through 17. Yeah. It says it in revelation. I just read it. Oh, you did. I'm sorry. I, I just read it. You weren't Revelation listening. You were looking 16. at other stuff. I did find it in yeah. my actual Bible. Yeah. But okay, so then it she says, in, dad. Just her watch dad. and pray that you may be able to escape. So there you go. The Bible says it. That you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. So that's our prayer is that we can, like, I love it. So someone also said Enoch was the first man that started um Maranatha, right? Which means Lord come quickly. M Enoch was a man that was so intimate with the Lord, right? I love Morgan kind of said that, or I think it might've been, he quoted it from Pastor John Corson. He said, Enoch was probably just like walking with God and so close with him that God's like, Hey, come to dinner. you want to come? Yeah. Come to dinner with me. And then he, he took him with him. So that should be us. We should be on a mission to be saving, not saving, we can't save anyone, but leading others to Christ. And I love it because this is also what Ray Comfort says. He says, if you're just saying to people, like if you're on a plane, right, that you guys, I'm not going to go into it, but the plane thing with the parachute, and if you're telling them, oh, it's going to be, um, like nothing's going to happen, it's going to be comfortable, but then they put the parachute on, they're like, oh, it's not comfortable, it's not easy. But then if you warn them, like, hey, this plane is going down in five minutes, so put the parachute on then they're going to put it on. But if we're just acting like, right, like it says, like in the days of no, oh, eat, drink, be married, like go, and not prepared, because what did Noah do? Noah warned the people. Mm. He gave them the time. chance. They Hard told them. And so this is going to lead into our next question about um, for those who are saying what is going to happen to the people who know the gospel mm. but don't accept it now. So that's the thing is the, the people in the times of Noah, they were warned. Noah warned them, but why? They were crazy. The same thing that people say about us. Oh, you're crazy. God said he, he said that so many times back when like Peter and Paul and the disciples, they were saying God was going to come back in their times, right? It says that people Second are going to be saying Peter that. Three. Where is it? Second Peter, Second Peter three. three, where it talks about, oh, he's going to come back. People are going to be talking that way. But for us, we want to be like the virgins, right? Who are ready. They had their lamp, the oil and everything. Not the ones that are like, oh, he's not coming back. We don't know. We always need to pre be prepared, not just for death, but for God to take us home. And so it doesn't matter. You're really, your eschatology or stuff like this stuff is exciting. And we think it is pretty clear how it gives the outline and stuff. But like my dad said, you just have to be ready that he come back in the twinkle of an eye, like a thief in the night, it says, right? You're not 
ready mm -hmm. to you're not, like you don't know when a thief's coming yeah. and so i think that also it just really helps us to be able to my dad's giving me emotions no, it helps sorry. us to be able to not just be watching but also praying and it also talks about those who have this hope in them keep like will keep pure. themselves pure first john 3 3 so yeah well it, i i want to yeah. say because you just really you inspire me <laughs> but I wanted to say it was a cool, I was just talking with someone. How many know there's a lot of carnal Christians out there? Yeah. There's a lot of people that say they're Christian that aren't living for God. They're sleeping with their boyfriend. They're doing drugs. They're doing crazy stuff. Well, I was just talking to someone a couple of weeks ago that was saying, I was basically telling them, and I'm kind of known as kind of someone who's a little, I don't know, kind of hard on people sometimes. But I'm hard because I want to speak the truth because the mm -hmm. Bible says, the verse I live by is Ezekiel 33, 3, where it says, I'm paraphrasing, but it basically says, if you see the enemy coming as the watchman on the wall and you not warn the people, their blood is upon your head. But if you warn the people and they don't take heed, their blood is upon their own head. So I don't want anyone telling me as a pastor, Pastor Craig, why don't you tell me? Why didn't you tell me that Jesus is the only way? Why didn't you tell me that I sh that fornicators should not inherit the kingdom of God, that homosexuals, practicing homosexuals should not, adulterers, fornicators, drunkards? Why didn't you tell me what it says in 1 Corinthians 6? So I tell people the hard things because, right, Better are the kisses of, a, or better are the wounds of a friend than mm -hmm. the kisses of the enemy, and so I tell them this. But this person, on their own, this person was a, walking with the Lord, was coming to our church, but then left. And this person on their own says, "Craig," and this is so funny because they're kind of afraid, right? All on their own. Craig, are, are we going through the tribulation? And I go, "Well, I'm not, but <laughs> you might know." No, I just said, "It is funny. Why would they ask that? Because they're afraid. They're afraid like." Things are going crazy now. I need to get right with God. And so they, and then they go, isn't there a scripture that kind of infers that if you're playing games with God, there's a good chance you could be deceived in the last days. You could be deceived uh, and that you could go through the tribulation and be deceived. And hear this, um, you know, how many, know? Oh, I'm thankful for the left behind series that really inspired people to, you know, uh, believe in end times things. It probably led a lot of people to Christ. But there was one of the movies, I don't remember which one, but if you remember, it was when the black pastor and all the people were left behind and they went to the church and they went, oh my goodness, and now they, now they know it's real and they're turning back to God. But Pastor John Corson shared this verse. I read this like 10, 15 years ago and I thought, oh my goodness, here's the verse. Listen to this verse. This is from uh, 2 Thessalonians 2, 9. Mm -hmm. And it says, talking about the Antichrist at first, it says, the coming of the lawless ones, the Antichrist, is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, um, and with and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish. Why? Here it is. Because they did not receive the love of the truth. So how many people are in church that aren't really submitting to the truth, aren't really yeah. receiving the love of the truth? They just say, oh, yeah, Jesus is just all right with me, that they might be saved. And for this, so they're hearing the truth, but they're just not receiving it that they might be saved, verse 11. And for this reason, God will send them a strong delusion. Why? Because they didn't love the truth. So it's talking about people that know the truth. It isn't talking about pagans that don't hear the word of God. So God, hear that, God will send them, not Satan. For this reason, God will send them a strong delusion that they should believe the lie. What's the lie? That the Antichrist is good. That they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in righteousness. So like what Mariah said, today's the day of salvation. Today's the day to get right with God. Now you don't, you don't have a guarantee that there's a tomorrow. You don't have a guarantee. They're thinking, Oh, I'm just going to sleep with my girlfriend. I'm going to party like a rock star. And then I'll give my life to Jesus, especially if it gets crazy. And I see everyone raptured. There's a good chance. This verse infers that you will be deceived, that God will hand you over to that strong delusion because why? You took pleasure in unrighteousness. You, when you had the chance to hear the truth, you did not respond to the truth. So that's why I am kind of a jerk and I exhort people, hey, live for God. Don't put it off. Today's the day. And people go, don't scare me. But how many know, as we said, Revelation, the book of Revelation is not to scare us Yep. but to prepare us, right? If you knew a thief was coming, if you knew someone was going to try to kill you and your family, you would probably get prepared. You'd lock your doors. You might even get a gun. You'd have 911 ready. You would be ready to try to advert, to, to stop that threat. And I'm not saying God's a threat, but when you have, when God's saying, I'm going to pour out my wrath on a Christ-rejecting world, well, guess what? I believe the way to spare yourself from that is to give your life to Christ. Give your life to Christ. Live for God. And I believe because of the first John or first Thessalonians five nine, he has not appointed us to wrath, 
but to obtain salvation through Jesus Christ. You want to escape the wrath of God? You want to escape the tribulation? Then receive Christ today. Maybe we should give an opportunity. Maybe I should pray mm-hmm. a prayer at the end. Yeah. So if you're here, if you're listening, and you want to receive Christ, then I want to give you that opportunity because it's as simple as just opening your heart. The Bible says in John 1, 12, to all who receive him, he gives the right to become children of God. All you have to do, I did as a drug dealer. I did it as a drug dealer. I said, I almost committed suicide. I almost blew my brains out. And God spoke to me. And I said, okay, God, I've ruined my life. But if you can do something with it, it's yours. That's how simple of a prayer I prayed. But I surrendered my life. A lot of people like Jesus as Savior, but they don't want to make him Lord. They don't want to give up the reins. They don't want to give up the control. They don't want to stop sleeping with their girlfriend. They don't want to stop doing drugs. They don't want to stop um, just living for self. But guess what? As I told you, these people said, Craig, are we going through the tribulation? Craig, what about this verse? Because Mm. God says in Romans one, that no one will have an excuse. Amen. So they know. And guess what? But did they repent? They knew. I told them just what I'm telling you. And they said, eh, I'll, I'll gamble. But hey, guys, don't gamble your soul because there's no, if you miss it, yeah, you can, you might be able to make it through the tribulation. Maybe God will be merciful to you. I don't know. I, I, this is the way I read that verse. Is where a lot of scholars read this verse. But guess what? You're going to go through a living hell and you're going to not experience just the wrath of the of, of Satan, but the wrath of God. And you a good chance you could be beheaded, as the Bible say. I used to think when I first got saved, I used to think that was nuts. Beheaded? We live in the twentieth century. There's no way we don't do that stuff. You know, it's mm-hmm. back in nineteen you know, nineteen eighty one. This is crazy. Now what happens? Yeah. Muslims are chopping it. It's not so weird now. Everywhere. Yeah. Anyway, but sorry. I no that was good. And I'm thankful for this, but because we have so many other questions, but the I'm just gonna do so we'll actually say for another video all the mm-hmm. questions that you guys have about the tribulation. You guys had a lot of questions about what are going to happen to the Jews. And just a little precursor thing, we are not replacement theology. We mm-hmm. do not believe, oh, we've replaced the Jews. Like, the well, we are going to read Romans 11, 11, talking about the Jews are his chosen people, right? Mm-hmm. But then... Um, we were also then grafted in, but it's not anything to get uppity about, right? And the tribulation, honestly, we're going to explain this in another video, and we'll get into all of that, and the 144,000, the witnesses, the Antichrist, and the bulls, and all that stuff. We'll get into that part of it, and a little bit more of the millennium and thousand-year reign, but we don't have time for that. Um, But it is exciting stuff to be able to realize that God is not done with Israel. Like a lot of people say that, but Mm -hmm. he's not. That is the time where so many Jews are going to be saved. Can I just say this? I want to say the why, because there's always a Mm -hmm. why. Why do people go cuckoo? Exactly. Here's the cool thing. So before 1948, Israel was not in Israel, or the Jews were not in Israel. Very few Jews were there. So um, the Muslims, the the Arabs had... um, um, pretty much the Temple Mount and everything. Well, then what happened is they did the the sixty seven war. They fought. They got back. And guess what? Israel became a nation again. Well, before that, so when you'd hear that Christ is going to rule and reign from from Jerusalem, that made no sense. So what scholars did, and amazing, we got to help God out. They said, well, we got to replace it. There's that symbolism. So it's really not going to be. So the Jews aren't really going to have much effect at all. So now the church is Israel. So because, why? Because they said, that, how can the Jews get back to Israel? They hadn't been there almost 17, 1800 years. Mm-hmm. So no one's ever gone back to the homeland after that long. So they said, there's no way this can happen. And then, da-da-da. Mm-hmm. It's like guy goes, yes, I can, I can do anything. All things are possible for those who believe. And we did it. And so now since 1948, I'm sorry, I said 67, but 1948, Israel became a nation. And so now guess what? So those replacement theology people should say, wait, we were wrong. We were just trying to help God out. But a lot of them still hold to it. And Mm. guess what? Hear this guys. If you think that God is like, I'm done with the Jews. I'm done with Israel. You need to be concerned because the Bible says in Psalm. Genesis, I'm sorry, Genesis 12, uh, 3, it says, I will bless those yep. who bless you. Talking about Israel. I'll bless those who bless you and I'll curse, curse those who curse you. Only reason I think we're doing so well, despite all of our goofiness, is because we support Israel, even though maybe this administration doesn't. But there's a lot, there's a remnant, a lot of people yep. in America say, no, we need to pray. And then it says in what, yeah, Psalms 22, 6? Psalm 22, 6. Yeah, Psalms 122, 6. It says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. All who love her will prosper. Be secure. Not only want you, I want to prosper. Amen. So we need to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We need to pray when we hear crazy things or wars or missiles. We need to pray because God says a blessing. And I mm-hmm. believe that as Christians, you know what I mean? 
he says, don't touch the apple of my eye. That's the Jewish people. We need to love the Jewish people. Now, it doesn't mean I want to say this. Just because you're Jewish, if you're not a Christian, you're not saved. Mm-hmm. So don't think that, that every Jew who's Orthodox is saved. No, you need to receive Christ. The Bible says, he who has the son has life. He who does not have a son. So a lot of Jews, sadly, do not believe Jesus is the Messiah. But it says they will. Mm-hmm. A lot of There's going to be a huge... Uh, revival yep. of the Jewish people in the tribulation period. Mm-hmm. Now they're going to suffer, the witnesses but they're going to the realize. Yeah, there's going. I mean, there's going to be so much crazy stuff yeah. going on. There's going to be 144 Jewish evangelists that are yeah. basically little Billy Grahams running Radical. all around. Then there's going to be an angel <laughs> declaring the gospel in the sky, mm-hmm. and there's going to be two witnesses. They're going to fly. Fire is going to come out of their mouth. So gonna, mad they kill. So, so it's going to be crazy, right? Yep. And there, and then, like you said, there's the good. So if you want to go through tribulation, there's how pe- the first three and a half years is the Antichrist doing a false peace mm-hmm. treaty. Mm-hmm. And yet they're going to kill two righteous men, right? You can argue yeah. who they are, but two witnesses, we'll just say that. And they're going to leave them in the streets. So yeah. I don't know about you. That doesn't sound like a really great time no. to me. But anyways. So. Yeah. So we'll talk about that all. You can ask any questions. It doesn't have to be about what we will talk about, but we will answer your questions about um, the why Antichrist because people are like, who is the Antichrist? And we say, well, like, we believe Mariah, that. You're so pretty. Oh, wow. Well, I didn't know this question. <laughs> but, yeah, um, so I didn't know it was a question. Way. I thought everyone knew. Wow. <laughs> uh, man, because you're my dad I and mom's my mom. Yeah, and I God's have to say that right the creator. Um, so the last ones that we'll answer, and this will lead into the time where you can pray for people to Mm -hmm. accept Christ in their lives. It says, what are the signs of the lost days? And then it says, where is our hope? So I'll read this a few verses and then you can talk, but can I, I'll just like read the verses and you guys write this down, take notes, get your notebooks out. But, um, second Timothy four, four, it says, so they will turn their, their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. They will turn their ears away from the truth, um, and they will reject the truth. Um, sorry, I don't know why I kept quoting it. I have to read in my actual Bible. But basically, that's what we're seeing nowadays, like the signs people are wanting. It also talks about having their itching ears, like tickled. they tickled. They want to be able to have what they want to hear. And then and, and I let think me, another and let me one say, that... Let me say, I got to say that. I got to say that. Hear this. This is where it's so crazy it's not that a lot of these teachers in the church of america are saying wrong things Mm -hmm. they're just leaving out the other things they're leaving out hell they're leaving out sin they're leaving out repentance all they're saying is god loves you god has a wonderful plan for you best life now you know treat every day like friday i mean all this man-centered gospel how many know this god loves you but guess what? God doesn't have a wonderful plan. Like he's not saying, hey, receive me so I can make a wonderful, I can let your wonderful plan happen. No, God has a wonderful plan for your life. And I love what C.S. Lewis said. Prayer is not getting God to do what we want. Prayer is getting us into God's will. And that's what, so a lot of the gospel today is, hey, accept Jesus and he'll be your genie and give you everything you want and he wish. Now God will bless you. But guess what? It's his kingdom come. His will be done on earth. We're supposed to get into his will. What is your will for my life? How do I serve you? Because we realize we owe him everything because he died on the cross for our sins. So the gospel today, the itching ears, is not so much heresy of saying a lot of wrong things. It's leaving out cross. It's leaving out repentance. It's leaving out It's leaving out denial of self. I love what one man of God said. He said a lot of these Laodicean churches, the end times church of kind of fleshly, he's saying, didn't we lead thousands of people to Christ? He says, yeah, but what did you lead them to? You led them to selfishness. You led them to to living for self, doing their own will. But what is the true church? Denial of self, surrendering your will to God. That's the true church, right? Crucified with Christ. No longer I who live, but Christ is in me. That's the true church, and that's what they forget, and that's the tickling ears. It's not Mm -hmm. heretical so much. I mean, there are heretical churches, but a lot of it is leaving out Mm -hmm. sin because, as one man said, you can't really appreciate the gospel, the good news, until you hear the bad news. What's the bad news? This plane's going down. He who does not have the sun does not have life. That's the truth. That's the bad news. But But here's the good news. All you have to do is open your heart to Christ, and then you will not go through all this wrath. Amen. And I encourage you guys, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but to read 2 Timothy chapter 3 and 4, because it talks about the godliness or the godlessness, not the godliness, the godlessness in the last days. And then our duty, which is in um, chapter 4, which is talking about how um, chapter 4, verse 
four, it says, and we'll turn away from listening to the truth and wander into mist and ask for you. So that's for us. Ask for you always be sober minded, endure mm-hmm. suffering, right? So there is going to be suffering. There's going to be hard times, but that's not the wrath of God in the tribulation. Wait, wait, can I endure say this? suffering. Can I say this? Way? But I love when people say, oh, you know, we're going to go through it. We're going to go all the way through. Okay. How do you prepare? I did a sermon on this. There's going to yeah. be hundred pound hailstones. Okay, they showed little hailstones the size, well, not little, but the size Soft of baseballs balls. or softballs. They rip through your car, yep. through the root of, roof of a car. They rip through your windshield like it's nothing. They'll rip through a roof of a house. How do you prepare for that? A hundred pound would be like the size yeah. of, probably like a size of one of those big rubber red balls yep. you just play four square with. I mean, it's going to be huge and they're going to blow yeah. up and your the house. Sad thing and is, it's like, how do you prep for that? You, you have to live in a cave. There's so many people prepping instead of prepping their own hearts and like mm-hmm. their purity with God and being sober minded and telling others. And it says, and then also do the work of evangelists, fulfilling your ministry. So there's so many people prepping and getting all this food supplies and all this stuff and other people believing, Oh, then there's other crazy people who believe in God's coming back. So then they're racking up the credit cards and being, but no, what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to go into all the world and share the good news. And I think that if we just are that, like have that mission mindset, then God will take care of us. Whatever happens. I like, but, what, I like what Keith Green said. See this world. I said this the other day, but I'll say it again. See, teach, see this world is like a sinking ship, like a big yep. cruise ship, a sinking ship. It's going down in the middle of the ocean. There's no other boats around. And we are trying to throw out the life preserver of Jesus to all who will take it. That's the way we should see it. This isn't a cruise ship where we're parting anymore. This is a sh- We're here to live for Jesus. We're here to tell people about Jesus. We're here to see as many people, g- to fill heaven as much as possible. And we know some people love sin. Some people love the lies of this world. But we have to believe there is a remnant. There is people that he's called before the foundation of the earth to come to know Christ. And we need to tell those people. We need to share the gospel. We need to pray, as I was saying Sunday, last Sunday, pray for divine appointments. Pray for God to bring people in your mouth. And we, I got a really cool divine appointment. We were sitting there in, in this lady who'd kind of been into new age, I think, and stuff. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, um, we were, I, we did the 40 days of life for abortion. We prayed against the abortion clinics, uh, at our t- place. And then all of a sudden I we went to whole foods. I don't go to whole foods usually, but I think I've been there four times, but we went there late at night. Cause I said, let's go to a quick trip trip and get drinks. But we went to whole <laughs> foods. All of a sudden this lady comes in and she goes, Craig Rotors. And I'm like, mm-hmm. uh, is this a good thing? I'm thinking I'm waiting for a gun to pull out. But anyways, um, she goes, I just watched you on YouTube. I just saw you. Oh my goodness. And then she just came to our church this last Wednesday. So it's really cool. And we should pray for that. That should be a natural thing for us. We should say, Lord, I look forward, bring people in my path who really want Jesus, who are hungry for truth. Bring me those people. And then God will do that. Amen. Cause that mm-hmm. we're supposed to be evangelists. We're supposed to go out and tell, we're supposed to go and make disciples of all the earth, teaching them to baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit and teach them to obey all that I commanded you. That's the great commission. That should be mm-hmm. the why of our life, why we live. Amen. Amen. And, um, I also just want to encourage you guys with these other verses of just being prepared and ready. Cause you guys also asked for like resources and stuff. Um, I encourage you guys, I know I said a lot, but to watch the movie Such before the wrath, um, that is with pastor Jack Hibbs. It's with Jan Markle. It's with JD Farag. It's, um, with Amir Zafadi. And so, I think it's really good because it's explaining back then, like Jesus, right? His first miracle was in a Galilean wedding. And he mentions a lot of like marriage and weddings and all that stuff. So it's explaining the Galilean wedding literally is like a picture and parallel a lot of the stuff to the, like the rapture and to God coming back for his bride. So it's, it's very beautiful and it makes me cry every time I watch it. So I encourage you to watch that. We'll put that in the description below. Um, and also, is that cause you want to get married or what? I want to be married to Jesus <laughs> cause we are, we're the bride of Christ. Yeah. But also I think it's important to be like, it says in Matthew 25, 10, but while they were on their way to buy oil, the bridegroom arrived and the virgins who were ready went with him to the wedding banquet and the door was shut. 
But then also there was the ones, right, who weren't ready, right? They're saying, oh, he, we don't know when he's coming, but we need to be like those virgins who are ready for the bridegroom, which is Christ. And also Luke 12, 35, it says, be dressed, ready for service and keep your lamps burning. Matthew 24, 44, so you also must be ready because the son of man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Revelation 19, 7, let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory for the wedding of the lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready so Mm. that's the key word right be ready like we need to be ready at all times and my dad always says is like you don't want to be caught doing something you shouldn't right you don't want to be caught with your pants down you don't want to be caught a millisecond yeah so how do you repent in a millisecond as fast as you blink your eyes yeah and we'll also talk about this too there's also rewards you also get rewards. And I know people are like, oh, you're saying you're living for rewards. Yeah, because the Bible talks about, because it's not just rewards for you to be puffed up with pride, but you're laying it at the feet of Christ, right? Those you know, nowadays counts. people do like wedding gifts before they're, that's us being able to come with something, right? Mm. It's embarrassing that he's giving us, he prepared a place for us and he's giving us these many mansions and eternity and we have nothing to show that that's really sad. So for us, we need to be prepared. We need to be ready. We, um, it says also in John 14, one says, do not let your hearts be trouble, troubled, believe in God, believe also me. My father's house has many rooms. And if that were not so, I would have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and I will take you to be with me that you may be also where I am. So there's hope, right? We always think, oh, this world is so awful and lame and it's just so much pain, but it's like, this is not our home as believers. So give that hope to other people, warn them, tell them also to be ready. Um, And I just, I think that there's a lot of craziness going on. We're seeing it, but don't let that discourage you, right? Because a lot of times what people say about people who believe in the rapture, they're like, oh, you guys are just escapists and you guys just give up and you guys are saying Maranatha, but we also can't give up on the mission God has put in front of us. We don't want to hear you wicked, lazy servant. We want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. So don't give up just because you're like, oh, the we see the signs, God's coming back at any moment but you also don't want to be the coward talks about being in the lake of fire. My dad just did a message on it. You also don't want to be the lazy or wicked servant. So, um, yeah, I, there's so many other things, but we don't have time for it. We ran out of time, but I'm excited to get into your guys' questions next time. Again, make sure you guys send those in and we'll also make sure to discuss anything that we feel led from the Lord yeah. to share with you guys. But do you want to, I'm kind of shy. People, I, don't like to talk much, you know. I think you do, <laughs> but also it's good for all of us. I've been because if bunch, you guys, a little but if you guys hear us say anything that you don't agree with, or you find another verse, we would love for you to share that with us yeah. because we're not saying we're right. And we know everything we don't, but it's encouraging that we get to study it and it just gets you excited and not distracted with the things of this world, but it gets you excited for God's return. So just be ready. Maranatha. Yes, Maranatha. And a, a good verse, just what you said, is Luke uh, 21, 28. It says, look up, lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. Yeah. So if you believe that, like I believe that, like the Bible teaches. How many know this? We don't know the day of the hour, but we know this with all our hearts. We're closer to the end of yeah. the, the, the rapture than we've ever been. Yeah. Today's the closest we've ever been to the rapture. We could know the sea, the, the the seasons, the times and the seasons, and we see things are going crazy. We see, I've asked every old person, I'm 59, but I've asked people my age and older, has it ever been this crazy in America? And people are like, no, this is nuts. So we see it, and but so this shouldn't scare you. I mean, I guess it should... Uh, what's to say concern you so it makes you turn to god that's good but it shouldn't make you fearful where you just paralyze and you're just like a fainting goat that'd be wrong but it should make you turn to god if you're playing games with god turn to god and right now i want to say this if you are christian but you aren't living for god you're like i said sleeping with your boyfriend or girlfriend doing drugs believe jesus a way you're just kind of doing you know you're not living right And I want to give you the opportunity to respond to Christ, to give your life to Christ, to recommit like the prodigal son. Come home. God's arms are open to you saying, come. And then if you're here today and you say, I've never accepted Jesus. I've always kind of, eh, I don't know. I was like that. I thought I was a new ager kind of. I thought, you know, it would be some Eastern thing like Bruce Lee and Kung Fu. 
But then I realized it was Jesus, and I just said, okay, God, I've ruined my life. I've been stupid. I live for self. If you can do something in my life, it's yours. So will you pray this prayer with me? I'm going to pray it out loud. I one more thing, too. I also think this is a good prayer for people who are lukewarm Mm. and who are keep doing a sin that they keep struggling with, whether oh, that's yeah, sexual immorality or something mm. like that. So the verses that I want to give is Ecclesiastes twelve fourteen. It says, God will judge us for everything we do, including every secret thing, whether good or bad. So also this is a time to repent. So I encourage you to take some of this time, pray Psalm 139, 23 and 24 to pray, God, search me. See if there's any anxious thing. Cause there's probably anxiety you might be getting from this video. Like, oh my goodness, like I'm not ready. I'm not prepared. Right. But then it also talks about, we were saying in second Corinthians six two, it says, for he said in a, a favorable time, and I listened to you in the day of salvation, I have helped you behold. Now is the favorable, favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. So don't, don't wait. And also if you're struggling with sexual morality or anything, um, it says, right, we always keep quoting it, but First John 3, 3, those who have this hope in them, right, the hope that God can come back at any moment will keep themselves pure. It also talks about um, that, oh man, I just had it. Matthew 5, 8, blessed are the pure in heart for they will see God. And so when, and then also Psalm 119, 9, how can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. So study the scriptures, study the prophecies, get excited when you read the word of God, because it is alive. And there's things that have happened, um, things that are happening now and things are c- to come, like it says in Revelation 119, right? Mm. So just I, I also want to read about the church of Thyatira because it's mm. interesting. And, you know, you can argue, can you leave your, lose your salvation or, uh, once saved, always saved. That's a big argument. But hear this. This is something that should be concerned, like you said about yep. lukewarm, because yep. you can argue, were Since they ever Revelation. saved? Were they saved okay. and lost their salvation, or were they never saved? We'll leave that for another time. But hear this. This is pretty interesting. It's the, the corrupt church is called, and and, and uh, the New King James calls it corrupt church, but it's uh, Revelation 2.18. It says, to the angel of the church of Thyatira write, these things says the Son of God, who has the eyes like a flame of fire and the feet like brass. I know your works, love, service. So they were very religious, service, faith, and your patience. And as for your works, um, so it says for your works, lest uh, um, the last are more than the first. Verse 20, nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allow that woman Jezebel, mm. who calls herself a prophetess, verse four, to teach and seduce my servants to what? Commit sexual morality. There's no sexual morality in the church today, is there? Mm. No, not at all. Could commit sexual morality and eating things sacrificed to idols. Verse twenty, verse twenty one. Or sorry, yeah, verse twenty one. And I'm uh, sorry, I said four because it has a little four there. Verse twenty. And I gave her time to repent of her sexual morality. And that's why, if you're watching this, that's yep. what God's doing. He's saying, hey. Yep. Don't, this isn't to scare you, this is to prepare you to mm-hmm. repent. To repent means you're going towards sin. Now you turn, you do a 180 and you turn and you go to God. You you quit your sin, turn to God and repent. You say, God, help me. You admit it, you admit your sin and you ask God to help you quit it. But he says, repent of their sexual morality. And she did not repent. And hear this, this is the concerning thing. Indeed, I will cast her into a sick bed. Mm. And hear this, those, these are all people that are playing games with God, but yet are religious, those who commit adultery with her into the great tribulation wow. unless they repent of their deeds. So hear that. Do you hear that? So you don't want to be lukewarm. What does Jesus say in, 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 uh, Revelation, in Revelation 3, 2? Yeah. Three, he says, he says, I wish you either hot or cold. Yep. I hear that. Isn't that amazing how God is extreme? Jesus says, you're either for me or against me. You're either so with me or you scatter. There is no in between. Amen. You're either hot or cold. You're either on or off. There's no, there's no sort of like Jesus is kind of cool with me. That's new age. Jesus, you need to be pedal to the metal all out for God. And so I want to encourage you. If you're kind of playing games and you're kind of doing whatever, a little bit of you, a little bit of God, a little bit of the world, a little bit of the church. Mm -mm. No. Today's a day Amen. to give it. And guess what? God is waiting for you. He mm-hmm. loves you so much. So I want to pray this prayer. Yep. Just pray this yep. prayer with me. Let's pray. And just repeat after me this prayer. And I'll mm-hmm. try to do it slow. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I confess you I'm a sinner. I confess you I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of my sin. Please forgive me of my sin. I believe in my heart, Father. I believe in my heart, Father. That you raised Jesus from the dead. That you raised Jesus from the dead. And I confess Jesus with my mouth. I confess Jesus with my mouth. 
Jesus, save me for the first time. Jesus, save me for the first time. Or Lord, I rededicate my life to you today. Lord, I rededicate my life to you today. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for receiving me back. Thank you for receiving me back. And now, Father, now, Father, I ask that you'd fill me with your Holy Spirit. Yes, that you'd fill me with your Holy Spirit. And empower me. And empower me. To live for you. To live for you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer and you meant it, let's give the Lord Yay. a clap. Hey. Because angels are rejoicing. God's Amen. happy. Everyone's stoked. We're happy. If you prayed that prayer to receive Christ or recommit, then make sure to tell us, Lord. Yeah. We just want to, and not that we go, ooh, you know, but we just, that just means so much. Mm. And we'd love to pray for you. Amen. And if you need like a Bible, yep. we'd love to send you a Bible if you need a Bible. Uh, but we just want to bless you. And we're just so excited. And like I said, like Mariah said it well, we don't know everything. The Bible says we know in part, prophets in part. But if you notice, everything we say, we try to have a scripture for. We don't just say, well, this is what I feel. Or if this you feel is like what, we don't, what, ask us. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, and this we try. That's what I love about Calvary's. They try to have everything based on the word, not my feelings or my opinion. And, uh, and you know, this is a complicated topic. Mm -hmm. But how many know? We're right. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just teasing. You. God's right. But, but God's right. Yeah, and it's going to happen his way no matter what. Yeah. But I think the Bible is clear. I love what one man of God said. When the literal sense makes sense, seek no other sense. And Revelation is pretty literal a lot of times. And we need to just take it literally. Like a thousand years is a thousand years. But we try to spiritualize and allegorize it. But we need to just take it. But the point of Revelation is a revelation of Jesus Christ yep. and to prepare us to live right and be ready for his coming. And how many know that Paul was ready for his coming? Other great men have been ready all throughout the 2,000 years of Christianity, and we need to be ready because, as I said, we're closer to the Lord's return than we've ever been before in time. So we need to be living right. And we're seeing this world is getting nuts, not even than I've ever seen it in my 59 years. So today's the day of redemption. Today's the day. Look up. Be ready for his return. Amen. Amen. Bless you guys. Amen. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us on Calvary Conversations. If you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video to your friends or family members who don't know the Lord. Or if you want to be able to ask us more questions, please make sure to email us at calvaryov at calvaryov.org. You can also message us or comment down below. You can also, if you would like to listen to us on Spotify or iTunes, you can go there and please make sure to give us a five-star review. You can also find us on Instagram at Calvary Conversations and you can check out our behind the scenes and sometimes I do lives and Q and A's on there too. So you can go there and also thank you so much to our sponsors mission heating and cooling please make sure to check out their website in the description below and also we're going to be having two events coming up we have october 31st which is our annual harvest festival which is a halloween alternative and so we'll be provi providing the main meal we'll be having obstacle course jumping castle we'll be having candy prizes contests horseback riding all that fun stuff s'mores but the main thing is we're going to be praying and worshiping and praying for God to just protect those children mm. that are being sacrificed with praying against all the darkness and the witchcraft and start praying that now as we're in the month of October Amen. and it's getting really dark start praying against the darkness and praise God that greater is Christ who is in us than he is in the world but we want to do our part and be children of the light not of the darkness if you haven't already go back and watch the video that we did with Stephen Mancars of why we don't celebrate Halloween and we shouldn't as Christians and also on November 14th Brian Sumner, he was on our Ooh. podcast before. He's coming. So that will be day. on a Sunday, November I, yeah. 14th. And he'll be talking about marriage and courting and being engaged. And he'll be selling his book, Never Fails. So you guys can buy that at the church at our 9 a.m. service, our 11 a.m. service. And we're going to have a special 6 p.m. service which will be kind of like a Q&A style. So please make sure to come to that one as well. And yeah, we have childcare provided. And did and you guys know that Mariah is the president of Turning Point, Turning Point Faith, Faith of our church? This other so church if you guys want to get... I, I ever thought I said she's the president of Turning Point Faith. No. But, so that's been out. Of so Charlie, church. if you heard this, sorry. But it's pretty cool. So we're going to yeah, have a lot more Yeah, and if you guys want to get Charlie involved Kirk. with that or anything uh, in, with praying for just our country and the craziness with like 
the vaccine mandates and the mask mandates and yeah. we're going to be going into the school boards which we've already been doing we have a group of people doing that and standing up for the nuclear family and pro-life and so all that so get involved come to me you can email me at calvaryov at calvaryov.org and yeah come to our church which is every sunday nine o'clock and 11 a.m and then our sunday we're in the book of daniel um 7 p.m to 8 30 p.m and then i think that's it but book of john think, on sundays yeah in the book of john on sunday so that's it thanks so much guys and we'll see you next week bless god you. bless love you